Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a recent watercolor painting, specifically to talk about using simple areas of light and shadow to create dramatic lighting. Let's have a look. My name's Tom, thanks so much for joining me. One of my favorite subjects to paint in any medium is actually the light itself. It's what always attracts me to a subject generally and focusing on the light so often is what brings the subject to life and because so much of watercolour is about painting shadows it can be an amazingly fun medium for capturing the light. But how do we actually go about creating a feeling of light and then using that to make a strong design in a painting? What should we be looking for in our subject, in this case a bird, and how can we translate that subject into a dramatic painting? No surprise that probably the main underlying principle is creating simple tonal value patterns, simple areas of lighter tones and shadow tones. But more than that, we can actually look at, say, grouping areas of similar tonal values together. And then we can also look at the benefit of keeping these light and shadow groups fairly well separated. There's also a great opportunity here to look at creating variegated washes, something I think is one of the joys of watercolour as a medium. And there's also an opportunity to look at different types of edges. The real-time narrated version and shorter format versions are available to watch over on my Patreon page. The links are below. Let's dive in and look at the reference and then we're gonna get on with some painting. So let's talk about tonal values and this is where the, the trapping and or capturing the light is really gonna come in. We've got very strong direct light here so I can almost afford to make my light colors pretty much just the white of the page for the rock, the white of the page for the, the lighter areas of the gannet. There will be some lighter colors, some lighter tones that aren't quite as bright as the white of the page but we try and keep all of those very close together and separate them quite significantly from the shadow group which will be kind of a shadowy mid-tone and a deep dark so if we flip this into black and white for a moment this can really help us understand our tones a little bit better and we can see straight away that we've got this beautiful strong deep shadow that's not a deep dark but it is a deep rich shadow on the beak where it's, getting, where it's not getting hit by light, the head and the neck in shadow, and also the cast shadow on the back there. That's a really lovely deep mid-tone. Now the tone running along the lower edge of the body is kind of a shadowy mid-tone, and I might make it a little bit darker, more similar to the, the tone of the, the neck and the head and the cast shadow on the back, just to simplify the tones and just to further increase the contrast and the feeling of light on that body. And then very finally, addition to that, we're going to look at the really deep dark. So I'm kind of analysing it in terms of four tones. Bright lights of the page, a very light mid-tone, and then a lovely deep mid-tone of shadow, and then the deep darks. That's our kind of basic tonal ideas. And that kind of is simplifying the subject tonally, and it's also grouping together the shadow tones and the light tones. And if I can keep it that simple tonally while I'm painting, we should be onto a winner. That's what's going to give us the great light. Now to decorate the light, we want to think about color. I'm going to kind of stick to the sort of colors here. We've got this beautiful rich blue on the back, uh, and this is an opportunity to create a single variegated wash kind of from the head, which I might make a little bit warmer, but lovely, so I'm a simple variation of color down into the back. Make the shadow on the wings maybe a little bit more pinky like it is in the photo, but we've got an opportunity here to link together washes of similar tone and vary the color within them. Very finely edges, so we've got soft, hard and lost edges. We can create within the form of the neck and the head and the back shadow, we can create some lovely kind of soft and lost transitions and edges in there. We, the edges that are created as we go around this lovely plump round form of the bird, that's a lovely soft edge. And then this is a great opportunity to oppose those kind of form shadows as we go around the form with this beautiful strong cast shadow on the head and we've because it's a car shadow we've got some very very sharp hard lines which will really help emphasize the feeling of light so edges are going to be important here in also creating the feeling of light let's have a look at the painting 
Annoyingly, I forgot to record the first five minutes or so of this painting, but it was basically just starting off with very, very light tea consistency, getting those colours to flow together, knowing that they're going to dry significantly lighter. So this is basically whites of the page initially, some of the very lighter colours, and I'm just starting to push some of those uh, shadow tones on the form of the plumpness of the bird a little bit darker as you can see dropping in a slightly stronger kind of full fat milk consistency and that's really what this first stage is pushing some of the tones a little bit darker but not too dark generally creating form lovely strong phthalo blue for the background letting that kind of hit the bird while it's still damp i want to create some lovely soft edges there because that's going to contrast with the really sharp edges of the light eventually. And uh, while that dries off, we're kind of straight into the lovely deep shadow on the back of the head, using a nice warm color, knowing it's gonna kind of subdue as we go, mixtures of yellows and reds. But what I'm gonna do here is really focus on creating a unified, simple area of tonal value. There is gonna be some variation of tone within it, as in the photo, but I wanna just create this lovely, strong, unified shadow on the head neck and across the back there to cast shadow and I'm just letting the colors kind of flow together I need to work with a certain sense of urgency so they all kind of flow together but there's reds yellows oranges blues all in there all kind of merging together everything from kind of full fat milk consistency to single cream consistency I'm letting that wash kind of dry off a little bit to a kind of moist stage then I go in with my kind of single cream paint consistency with more red and just push in that lovely dark shadow that is within the shadow so overall I'm trying to create a lovely soft transition of tone within the head and the neck and the back but there are some areas that are a little bit darker some a little bit lighter some a little bit softer in transition between color and tone but the car shadow being a very sharp hard edge shadow and I'm then taking some similar approaches down in the bottom area introducing a little bit of turquoise just to make it a bit more interesting uh, to kind of counteract a lot of the warmer purples and certainly the warmer colors in the head finally bringing in some really deep dark into the bird itself this is phthalo blue with a little bit of red about double cream paint consistency letting all of those colors flow together you can see where the colors have kind of merged and created a softness this is generally in the shadows and this is such a useful tool for creating light is to have softer more blurry shadows and then where the light is hitting we've got these really hard sharp angular edges I'm creating a really warm shadow in the rock here, very different from the photo, but what I am stealing from the photo, which I feel is relevant, is the very strong, sharp edges because it's a cast shadow, and almost by leaving the majority of the light a very, very bright white of the page, we're really creating a very strong feeling of direct sunlight here. Like I said in the analysis of the reference photo, the light areas are almost like completely blown out as they would be in an overexposed photo, almost just white of the page with the odd very subtle tone in there. I'm taking the same approach in the rock here, just warming the colour up to make it more interesting and counteract a lot of the coolness in the rest. And then we're dropping in some of these deep rich darks into the feet and letting that bleed into the car shadow and creating a bit of texture in there. And then it's just back up to the head to finish this off. So I need to cast the entire beak into that kind of blue shadow very similar in tone to the head and the neck then with some of the deeper darks within it so it's still only two tones within the shadow group the deep dark and the deep rich mid-tone and now I'm very carefully using a really strong deep dark kind of an abstract shape stealing a bit of the color and an idea from the photo but not sticking to it rigidly and just using this now to create that very very hard sharp edge of light on the top of the head and on the top of the beak and again it's that interaction of the softer gentler shadows of form um, and also just because they're in the shadows those softer more wet into wet marks contrasting now with the very 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 sharp hard lights generally being created by the lovely deep rich dark trapping those lights on the head not being afraid to let some of the whites of the page of the bird meet the whites of the page of the background just to create a couple of different types of lost edge light against light and there we have it so going back to my analysis of the reference we've got 
big unified areas of very, very similar tone, but within them we've got this lovely variegation of colour which has been created by working wet into wet, damp into damp. We've got the lights being very bright white at a page with a few slightly darker colours but still very light colours on the whole and then we've got our shadow group which I've tried to keep very similar in tone and then very finely pushing towards the deep darks. We've got soft form shadows and very sharp hard cast shadows. We've generally got softer more wet into wet work in the shadows which really allows the strong hard bright lights to really sing out and speak out and add some real contrast and for me that really helps capture the feeling of light and the colour is the little decoration on top so there we go that's it guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it please do consider subscribing if you did there's going to be loads more to come so don't forget to hit the notifications bell links in the description for all of the other places you can find me including my patreon teaching channel where there's loads more exclusive content a lot more videos over there until next time guys happy living Happy painting and creating and I will catch you in the next episode.